show, everybody. This is One Day to Love, and today my guest is Todd Wharton. He is the number one independent podcaster in New York City. He's been handling all of these parades. There's NBC, ABC, CBS, and him. So I'm very, very proud of him for making it to that uh, that place, and I just want you to welcome Todd Wharton. Hi, Todd. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Are we going to the beach, baby? Yeah, listen, man, when I knew I was coming out, we were going to talk about dating. I'm like, I, if I'm going to pick up Tanya, I got I to show some love. I got to I gotta get a little fun going here. I got I, I got to let her, listen, there is no menu in a restaurant that would have you on it because you're just too expensive for these restaurants. Oh, so I got to come correct. Oh. We're going right to the beach, man. We're going to any island that you want. We'll do the beaches. You know, we'll get the drinks. All right, I'll believe it when I get the ticket in the mail, Todd, when I get the ticket in the mail. Yep, you know how they say the check's in the mail? When the ticket's in the mail, we'll talk. Um, yeah, I don't send no checks. Just so <laughs> well, that would be called all something cash. else entirely. All cash. That yes, would be all cash because there's no paper trail. So no matter what happens. Yeah, but you're not married. Done. You don't have a problem. True that, true that. Right, right, right. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Now, why is that? Uh, well. I, I was long story short, I was engaged. Well, I was supposed to be was gonna get engaged and everything, and uh things happen. Um, she's not here anymore. We'll leave it at that. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, so um I understand I guess, that. Uh, My husband's not here anymore either. Yeah, I mean, but you got to live a great life with somebody yes, and, you know, you have beautiful kids and um no regrets on that. You know, life is just, uh, life takes you for a turn. And um, somebody actually uh, put a quote online too much ago that we always save money and uh, for the future, right? But life is so unpredictable that why put, why put away so much money when live for today? Because you just never know what's going to happen. And I've been doing that for a while now. And uh, I just think I had a bad run of relationships. Like I'm, a, you know, I'm very easy to get along with. I work hard. I respect women entirely. I love independent women. I support independent women. Um, I don't want somebody to like me because of who I am or what I can bring. It's all about the love process, right? And I think you know, once you find that person who can fill the gap and that hole that you have in your heart, where the wind blows through, that you could still feel it. That's when you found somebody real. So. You could be the greatest person in the world, but a lot of people in this world go through a lot of bad relationships, and it's really not them. It just you haven't found the right person yet, and that's right. I think that's where I'm at at this point. Okay, well, I've gone to YouTube several times to get advice about yeah. where to find men, what to do, what they're looking for, what'll drive them crazy, what won't drive them crazy, what they what they what's awful, um what's what's a bad boy do, what's a good girl do, what's a bad girl do, which I knew already cuz I got paid a lot of money to play that part. Um That's right. And I I finally had this woman on the show, Dr. Carol Lieberman, who mm -hmm. wrote a book about bad boys and why women love them and then when to leave them. And then a book called um, Good Girls and What Their Secrets Are and How to Be One If You Want to Be One or something like that. Okay. And um, it reminds me of when I was really, really young. I mean, really young, like 14, 15 years old. I went to the library and I got this book called How to Get a Teenage Boy and What to Do with Him When You Get Him. Because back when I was little, no one knew. <laughs> <laughs> now they're on TikTok and they're seeing it everywhere. And when I was on One Life to Live, you couldn't show any tongue or the standard and practices people would call. And if you were like, like you know, on the couch, you had to make sure that one or the bed, one foot had to be on the floor. I mean, it was just so different, you know. Yeah. And now I'm getting these um, like followers that are like half naked really do you ever see that has that ever happened to you yeah um i get a lot of uh pornographic people that follow me a lot um I and they have that. no clothes 
<laughs> they have no, and, <laughs> but they have no posts. It's it, when you click on a profile, it's just a profile picture with nothing on it. So it's either a bot or somebody who's following you, hoping that you would, you know, respond to their message that's in your junk box. So they could be like, hey, you remember me? Like, we know I never met you before. So I think a lot of people get that as well. Okay. Do you think that? So that's how it works. I have no idea. I have no idea. Yeah. No, listen. I only respond to if it's direct or it's referred to me. I really don't respond to any unwanted messages or spam or anything like that because you don't know who it is and you don't know if it's a spam or somebody trying to get money from you. And a lot of these accounts today, you're like, wait, aren't, don't, aren't I connected with this person already? So that's a red flag too because now people are mimicking accounts thinking that you'll accept it and then you'll start talking to them. So. Yeah, I've had that happen too. Hey, listen, I want you to put up the uh, reason I wanted to have you on the show is because you have had me on your show so many times. Yeah. And it just never really occurred to me that you were single. And so I thought I would get New Yorkers, you know, are you in your 30s or 40s? Uh, thank you. You're welcome. Saying that. Okay, so uh, we're in 40s or 50s. We're in there somewhere. So yes. what what I want to hear about what it's like in New York, you know, mm -hmm. um, where do you go to meet people? What do you do? Have you done the online thing? But first, I want to find out how you got into doing what you're doing and how did you get to the New Year's Rock in I just have so many questions. Put up your show in the back so people can recognize it. Damn, I'm going to tell you right now. This sounds like when you're in New York, we have to have a second gauge. There's too much to, too much to talk <laughs> Is this a date? I didn't know this was a date. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. So go ahead and and do change your background. I want I want everybody at home to see what you've got going on. It's very very slick. How right. cool is that? There you go. That's that's my background. That's uh, my that new year. The coolest. I love that. I love that. Yeah, we took that from uh, New Year's Eve uh, Rock and Eve that I just did. Um, so I thought it would be a great new background from the new season. So yes, it's fantastic. It makes me miss home. Really? No, no, no. Uh, you'll, you'll come back. You'll come back, bring the family. Yeah. You know, get I know. some Chinese food and all that. My daughter's stuff. there. Yeah. My daughter's there. Yeah. Out know. You can't get a decent pizza to save your life. Well, you know what? Your daughter can always reach out to me, and she's got one friend here that she can feel safe with. Oh, so. thank you. That's so sweet. Yeah, of course. Oh, no, of I, course, worry of about, course. I worry about her like crazy. Um, we'll no. get. Yeah, we'll not you, now she has the right people around her. Well, we t I just, it's hard, you know? So how did you get into this? And tell me some of the guests you've had that people might know. Uh, well, long story short, I created the show during COVID. Um, like everybody else, um, you know, you kind of got, you started getting used to getting the free checks and everything. But I say in a lot of shows, there are two <laughs> types of people that went into COVID. <laughs> Yeah, free checks. It was awesome. I didn't get free checks. I must have, I must be living in the wrong era or the wrong street. You not get a free check. All you have to do. Oh, I think I, I got mean, eight hundred dollars. You owe like fifty thousand dollars. I think I got eight hundred bucks. Oh uh, yeah, I got a little more. We'll believe it at that. But anyway, so there were two types of people going into COVID. Right? You had the grinders, and you had to pass me buyers. And I'll explain that. People that were hustling prior to COVID. COVID was a dream, not not the disease itself, because God rest everybody who passed, you know, prayers to everybody, family. COVID was a dream for grinders because we all live in, an, in, a, in a life where our parents used to say, even the younger generation today, I wish I had enough hours in a day. Well, COVID gave you that. And to the grinders, it was like, wow, now I can really figure out what I want to do, right? So during COVID, my company went into the crapper. So I'm like, you know what? I started interviewing people. Let me really study how to be a talk show host because people really liked it. So I learned everybody that you can think. I studied everybody. I learned how to direct, produce, write, act, sing, uh, dance. I, I learned everything. Graphic design. Or do, uh, what else? Direct, creative, uh, so content impressive. create. Yeah, and I, I really wanted to go 100% for it. And uh, I started to show live, which was a mistake. I can't see your eyes. because you, Could you take your glasses off? Because the light keeps blocking me. Sorry. Now okay. you can't see me, but I, I look right. fine. 
you look great, girl. Thank you look you. great. Thanks. Um, so, Thanks. yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. So, um, the grinders. I just started um, interviewing a lot of great people. I did a live originally and I decided not to do it. I wanted to build better content. The best content, unless you have a huge team, is always not live. So you can edit it, add whatever you want. And um, what I did was each season, I started adding different content to the show. So I started out with interviews. Then the next thing, I started adding parodies and then monologues. And now I have musical guests on the show. So I have a guests and a musical guests, intros and outros, credits, everything. So now I have a full-fledged kind of Jimmy Fallon show, but everything done online and editing with my team and everything. And it went from an idea during COVID, and I connected with publicists, managers, agents, celebrities, the movers and shakers. And now I'm at over 800 celebrity interviews just over three years. Who's the most exciting that you've interviewed? Besides me. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, my favorite one, because we had a talk and we have interviewed him again, Jimmy Fallon. Uh, wow. He, what was it like to interview Jimmy Fallon? Uh, Jimmy's actually as great as the guy he is that you see on camera. Same person. Um, we just developed this great camaraderie. And the interview that we did, went from supposed to be like 40 seconds ended up being like three, four minutes. Hmm. And people are like, didn't you, did you guys, pop? I'm like, no, like we saw each other. We got a good vibe with each other. We connected, did a great interview. And we spoke offline. And then I saw him again, Thanksgiving. I couldn't get the interview because he was all over the place because it was a huge one. But we ended up doing some funny stuff while he was on the float coming by. And it was just great. You know what it was? It's, I think when you meet people like you and there's a good camaraderie, interviewing is like it's supposed to be a conversation when you're dealing with a professional who's on a comedic level as you are, respect level, it just flows. And it was an honor to interview him not only once, but now every time I see him, I can't just get a beer with him. We don't have that relationship. But when we see each other, it's nothing but love. It's, it's hugs. We know each other, and um, it's just great. And the list of names besides Jimmy is crazy. Like Gerard Butler, he was a great interview. Um, He's Al such Roker a good is actor. a friend of mine. Yeah, great actor. Al Roker is a friend of mine. Oh, uh, wonderful. I love Al Roker. Al Roker is a beautiful man. Him and Deborah Roberts, friend for years. Uh, my recent one, which was incredible, was Jelly Roll. Um, okay. Now tell me what the deal is with Jelly Roll. He's a country singer. He's a Jelly Roll American, is a very tough looking country singer. Yeah, he's a crossover artist, so That's he's great. Like That's so country. I love that. He's an amazing man. If you guys ever get a chance, like yourself, check out his story. Um, he is a huge inspiration to me. He was looking at my videos before I met him because I saw him looking at my stuff. And when we saw each other on New Year's, he just came right over. Oh. And I asked him one question. How does it feel to be interviewed by the number one independent talk show host at age blah, blah, blah? And you're number one at age 40. Gave me a great answer. And it's like, I love you, brother. I'm like, bro, I love you too. We gave a bump and left. Oh. It was just great to... Talk to somebody like him who never gave up because he, I believe he was in jail. And when he came out, his wife, Bunny, beautiful couple, he's somebody that is the epitome of never give up, ever. And he's just a great guy. And it was just awesome talking to him. And it's not going to be the last. So. That's so nice. That's great. Yeah. Oh, when yeah. I when I had my talk show in uh, Connecticut, it was on the radio and it was called Straight Talk Live with Tanya Walker. And mm. what I tried to do, which I'm going to do again, is is present both sides of issues because I don't think that's done anymore um, mm. very often. And I try to stay neutral and just bring in people from you know various sides of whatever the issue was. But I yeah. also couldn't help but bring in some people that I knew. So I had Joey Pants on. 
I had nice. Vince, um, Vinny, um, Pastore. Yeah. So those, oh, Vince and Pastore from yeah, Soprano. That, that was my Soprano. Was, this was a while back. Um, nice. Lucy Arnez, who I've known for years, she went to my church and, and oh, she lives Lucy down, Arnaz. yeah, she lives down here now. Um, I had Governor Christine Todd Whitman on. I had Bobby Kennedy Jr. on, and I would really, really, really love to get him now. Um, yeah, I, you know, I just, I'm just trying to do this, this theme for for now, and then I'm going to move into the other, you know, the other thing a little bit more. But I really wanted to do this because I'd had such funny stories some, and nightmares happen as a result of this dating thing. Um, you know, you never know when you're going to be uh, alone and back out there, you know, and I don't know what out there is, but you do know that you don't want to die by yourself. You don't right. want to live your last 20 years by yourself. Mm -hmm. and so you have to figure out how to meet somebody that you might want to spend that time with. And so I'm finding that this online dating thing isn't very much fun. Um, <laughs> and, and, and I have no idea how to meet anybody in Palm Desert because everybody's down here with their wife retired. They're retired or they're, or they're going into a nursing home or something. And I'm, and I'm not young, but I'm not, thank God, going into a nursing home. And I heard some stories today about people that broke this and broke that and fell and this and that. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to go back to the weightlifting thing I did all my life because I haven't been doing it. You know, I got lazy and, you know, depressed and blah, blah, blah before I did this show. And I need to do that now because I want to build up my muscles so I don't break anything and I don't fall on my, you know, whatever. What would I do? I'm falling and I can't get up. I don't want that to be me. No, thanks. No, thanks. Hey, yeah. if you find the right person and you end up falling in bed with them, I don't think you ever want to get up after I that. So I'm just I don't want to fall in bed. I don't want to fall down and break a hip. Shush up. You're so funny. <laughs> I love that about you, though. So, so. The New Year's Eve thing was such a coup. How did that come about? Uh, it was my third third year. Third or second, second or third year uh, doing it. Um, and God bless. I developed a really good respect in the industry with all the networks, so a lot of celebs. So Yay. when I show up, um, it's becoming easier for me to network with a lot of the people. Um, Ryan Seacrest, I've kind of brushed up. I haven't really spoken to him yet, but he sees me. And one thing about this industry, and I want people to know that if you're really going to get into this industry, it's going to take you a long time for people to warm up to you, to talk to you. And it's not personal. It's whether it's a publicist agent, a celebrity, they're approached every day. So in order for them to really get to know you and respect you, you need to consistently have them to see you. They don't need to speak to you because eventually if they see you in enough and they see you're in different places that they are, they may be like, hey, I've seen you a while, and they'll develop a account because now they know you're not a fan or a groupie, and they may look at your stuff. So um, I made it a point to build back the old school ways of business, like in a relationship is build trust with people. Let them get to know you, right? Um, doesn't happen overnight. And uh, you may get rejected a million times, but then one day you won't, and then you develop that great relationship. And I'm saying it like that because business and personal relationships are very similar. Um, it's a passion, right? And I always tell people a passion is a lifetime achievement award. If you get married with somebody or if you're dedicating your life to this business or craft, you're dedicating your life, meaning it's not temporary. Dedicate your life, you know? And it's going to be ups and downs. But if you love it, you're never going to give up. That's right. Go with That's what you were saying about Jelly Roll. You can add something to your life. It, you know, I did real estate for a minute because there wasn't enough work. Right. It was, but, um, but it never made my heart sing. Well, you know, there's something, uh, there's something about when I used to come down the steps at One Like to Live, I floated. I mean, I really did. I just, I would work with Tom Christopher and we'd have so much fun. And I, and I just got, I just felt like I was floating down the stairs. And that's when, you know, that's, 
And there's really not that many people that get to experience that. So if that happens again, that would be fabulous. If it doesn't happen again, I'm lucky I had it, you know. Um, yeah. But I also. You got a great family. I do, and and but they are moving. They're launched, and I I want to do something for the world. I want to do something more, um, even if I create opportunities for other actors or opportunities for other children. I had my own professional performing arts studio in Connecticut, so I could very well do that. I'm just not sure yet. Um, what they do need is an Alzheimer's place out here that engages the brain of the people instead of just having them sit there and watch TV. I've noticed that. So I called somebody about that today and I asked them if there was something that I might be able to, to do with that because you don't want them just sitting there like, like toasted. I mean, th th there's a lot of things that they could, that people that have that injury or that disease could still do. And it actually yeah. helps them, you know, and um, you know, there's just a lot of things in the world that you can do, especially today. Um, the, the, the world is a mess, you know? So uh, yeah. yeah, it's a mess. So on the lighter note, what is going on in New York? Are they taking Trump's building? What are they doing? Uh, I, I have no idea. Listen, at the end of the day, um, politics, news, media, entertainment, it's a very un unpredictable situation. You don't know who's going to win, who's going to lose, who's right, is, who's wrong. I heard or even the Democrats are upset that they might take it, try to take his buildings from him. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's you know, that's that's that's. It's crazy because honestly, I was in real estate and there is a contract that you that you fill out when you buy or sell a house. And when you go to the bank, you say, I'm going to try, I'm going to, I'm going to pay my house is worth $750,000 and this person's come in and they want to pay $850,000. Will you give them uh, a loan for $850,000? The banks don't say yes. Right. <laughs> the banks well, think, go and do their due diligence and then they say, okay, we'll do it for 750 but not a penny more. And you're like, oh, all right. Well, he had that in all his contracts because it's a state mandated thing. Um, right. And so if if he said his buildings were worth more than they were, um, they they wouldn't have been able to give him a loan on something that they didn't think was okay because that's that's against the law, you know? Well, so I don't understand. You didn't do anything uh, wrong. They are, but they all got paid back and they all got interest. I don't know what the problem is. Listen, all I know is, is that being the talk shows, I learn a lot of stuff from behind the scenes and I do know not everything is factual. Yeah, I mean, I really have no personal comment on it because uh, it's kind of funny you mentioned the Democrat Republican. I've been watching a designated survivor on Netflix. Which Isn't is it great? I love it. It is honestly my favorite show right now. And uh, I'm still in season one, but I love the fact that he's an independent and he's trying to bring both parties together. And I'll be honest with you, it's because um, we'll get back to the day in a minute because I know we that's the whole premises of the Cabo. But I do know one thing. Since the dawn of time, this whole world's been separated. And if people forget, originally this land on Earth was a whole. It was one piece, right? And then along the lines, nature decided to separate everything, right? And now we have politics where it's separated by parties. You have communities that are separated by race, right? You have other communities separated by sexual gender. And I think the problem with this world is from the dawn of time, we grew up in a world that everything's separated, right? And I don't think we'll ever get to the point where we'll, we won't be separated because this is too much divide, too much opinion, and now social media it just gets worse and worse. And seeing a show like Designated Survivor only in the first season, it's kind of cool seeing somebody that's independent come in that can actually bring together. Yeah, I like at the that. End of the day, that was a nice opinionated or not in anything or people, right? And um, if anybody I not get along hurt. with anybody, yeah. If anybody was hurt or sick, um. Yeah. And everybody would help them, no matter if they had three arms, two legs, and were green. There's a, yeah. there's, there's a human, there's a soul and a human spirit in every human being from, I believe, God. And you can't, you can't um, see somebody that needs help and, and just walk by. I mean, it would, it yeah. would 
it it just it's just um we're all we're all really brothers and sisters and that that's what really people need to remember you know exactly and i tell people this all the time whether you're on a date or a family dinner or whatever two things never to talk about politics and religion because no matter if you're right or wrong those two subjects can make or break a lot of relationships and just leave it off the table because listen I'm not a big Trump fan. I was when he first came out. I changed my ways a while ago. I never voted for him. But I'm going to keep it 100. Do I like the guy? <laughs> but if I happen to be walking, he was next to me. And it was just me and him. And he, had, he was having a heart attack, right? Whether I my opinion about him or not, I would still get down and give him mouth to mouth and try to resuscitate him. Because at the end of the day, he's still a human being. That's right. You know, and I'm letting people know that it has nothing to do with, you know, our, my opinion about him or whatever. He's still human. If he if something happened, I would be there just like I would for a dog, like if it was my dog, right? Or my girlfriend or which I don't have right now and, and or a wife. Okay. Ever. okay. At so the end what, of the day, it's about, you know, me okay. human. You're and, a good uh, guy. You're a good guy. So what dating sites have you been on? Is there any that you think are good or bad or have done something? I think they were all horrible. Um, and to be honest with you, I'm, I'm a very uh, open person. I can talk forever. And I like the fact being rejected. And I'll explain that. Because when I like meeting somebody and getting to know them. And when you're talking to them face to face, you get to know their personality. And they smile and they're joking and the way they move throughout the conversation. You can't do that do this and that and even sometimes online because everybody tries to be perfect, right? I don't want you to be perfect. I want to see your flaws. And you want to know something? You know, I'm a decent looking guy. I got my mother's jeans and my pop, right? But it doesn't mean I'm the look that every woman looks for, right? So I get rejected by somebody. I don't take it personal like, oh, they don't like me because I'm just like, hey. I may not be their type. Like they may like a big, you know, strong black man, you know, with this. And hey, I'm half black, so I'm Sicilian lady. So I'm just letting you know that right now. But it's but it means that I may not be your type, you know. And uh, I think a lot of people are afraid of rejection. And listen, I rather I'm more afraid of being lied to online and then meet the person up front and find out you're not the person who I thought you were. But if you guys think that's a joke. I did a parody with my brother called Say Cheese. Com. I saw that. That was funny. That was funny. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people loved it. And pretty much the premises was I was talking to a girl named Kiki for eight months. I finally had a video call for the first time after eight and discovered it was my brother. I and saw it. It was a parody based on. When you're online, you just don't know who you're talking to. You don't know if you're getting the person you've been talking to or the perfection of the AI version of the person they wanted you to be, right? And can uh, they do that in a video? It's not well. Not it's not just a video. A lot of people when they first meet, I do FaceTime always. Profiles. I don't, well, yeah. when you first are talking to somebody, it's usually through checking out a profile. Mm -hmm. And then seeing all the attributes that they added to that. Listen, nobody ever says, oh, I'd love to take long walks on the beach. That's a, a bunch of crap, right? The only time I take a long walk on the beach is if I just ran two miles. Now I got to walk back to my blanket. That's there you go. <laughs> nobody ever does, oh, I'd love to take long walks on the beach and romantic, you know, trips around the world. How many times you take a romantic trip around the world? Cut the BS, all right? It's real. Hey, I like Netflix. I like to eat Chinese food at night sometimes with my chicken and broccoli, a little bit of cashews. Do you like rom coms? Be real. Like, do you like going to a movie once in a while? But I'm not going to spend 50 bucks to go see a movie. That's just crazy. Because I remember when popcorn was this big. And I spent this much. Popcorn is this month, and I'm spending this. Month. <laughs> That's so, true. It's let's keep it a hundred. Like That's when right. you're online, keep it real. You know, if you don't like something, keep it real. If you like something, keep it real. But don't exaggerate the truth on who you are. You know, if you brush your teeth every day, great. If you don't, 
that's a problem you should deal with, but don't lie about it. Because <laughs> when you make out with somebody and you still got the broccoli stuff. Oh, stop, 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 stop. I'm going to gag. Okay. So who's but the keep it, But keep it real. I got that's it. That's what I'm saying. Keep it real. I got it. Well, we're almost out of time. I want to know who you have next. What's going on now? Who do I have next? What? On TV, on your show. Yeah. On your show. Oh. <laughs> um. Well, I don't know. When is this going to air before I answer next, that This question. week. This week. Oh, this week? Yeah, we go okay, right out. So, so right now on today's, what, the uh, 21st? Sure. So uh -huh. on the 23rd, you may actually notice that. Well, two people, let's mention. Last week, I had um, Jessica Morris from um, One Life to Live. Beautiful girl. Who's in a, who's in a new movie now with uh, Billy Baldwin. Uh, which is called Break In. You guys can find it in Peacock. What's it called? What's it called? Breaking what? Oh, break In. It's, it's called Break In on Peacock break with in. Billy Ball with Jonathan Stoddard and Jessica Moore's great film. This Saturday, the 23rd, I have a husband, Rip Hillis, who you guys know from Port Charles, GQ Magazines, all the sci-fi crazy movies. Now he's in a new series that he's a lead in, uh, Call Tales of Jim Bridger, which is on the INSP network. INSP? What's that? INSP Network. It's like a Western network. It's okay. like a private network. And that's with musical guest Jack Harris. Last week, I had Ryan Ellis, Grammy nominee. And then next week, I have Mika Dalla, who's uh, well-known from her uh, show, actually movie, well, series called Sex Appeal, which was on Hulu. And now she's starring in a new show on Paramount Plus called Snack Shack. Oh. And... Um, I have uh, uh, Darian Lay, who's a, an up and coming country star. She's huge right now. So, awesome. my next you should come out here for Coachella and and um, stagecoach. You'd see so many people out here. Oh, I would love it. And yeah. I'm supposed to be, I'm, I'll give a hint right now. I'm in talks right now of interviewing Darius Rucker, oh. which is uh, really cool. And um, I have. Somebody from Child's Play coming on. Somebody from Legacies from the Vampire Diaries. So oh boy, kind of keep it all over the place. Oh, yeah. don't it's forget to tell fun. me about that because my daughters watched that Vampire Diaries religiously growing up, and they're saying now because they're hiring a lot of influencers, yeah. influencers and not really actors. Um, my daughter's not happy with the casting of many of these shows today. So we're hoping that it goes back to the, she's like, where are the Paul Wesleys and the Ian Summerholders of the world? And hey, where, where's the talent? Is that what she's saying? Like where and the, the handsome talent? talent, the handsome talent too, that really know how to act and they're really good, you know, and they're always yeah. older. She said they're, they were always a little bit older, but we were all just in love with them. And I That's said, right. I don't, I don't know, honey. I'm not in casting right now. I just cast Zach Efron. That's the best casting I ever did. And uh, when I did my movie, and that was the best. Yeah, the Derby Stallion. It's on stars. So I am so happy that you could come here and that we're buddies and that we'll do this again. And when I come into New York to see my daughter, I'll make sure that I look you up and we'll go to Sardi's and have a good time. Sounds like a plan. Does that sound good? Okay, call me that anytime. Cool. It was wonderful, wonderful to see you. Of course. Okay. Great to see you too, as always. Okay, hon. Love you. Bye. <laughs>